Morning guys. We have 14 days, just two weeks remaining. It's a Friday and Yeah, I'm, I'm actually stuck for words for once. Two weeks to go. And in a week's time, I'm going to be going, oh, a week to go. Um, and a week previously, I said, oh, three weeks to go. But it's a real exciting time for me. It's actually, people have started to come together now, and message me, and speak to me about my journey from all different walks of life, which is actually what I intended. And I said from the very beginning, I wasn't looking to gain any kind of personal significance from doing this. There was, there was never that intention there. Um, just on the basis that, I mean, this is ridiculous. There's a car that has blocked the road and no one lets them out. Why are people just so incredibly selfish? Um, you know, I'm not looking to gain any kind of personal recognition for this. There are plenty of more qualified triathletes out there. Ironmen, finishers, six-time world champions. You know, you've got... I posted an interview with three Kona podium finishes yesterday on uh, Facebook, I think it was, an interview that they did. Uh, it was Luke, Dave, and it's really bad, I've forgotten the third guy. That's awful. Well respected guy anyway, and uh, who finished twice in second position. Oh man, what's his name? I'll put it in the links below and the link to the video, which is available on YouTube. But he... Um, there, there are plenty more qualified people out there to talk to you about transitions, you know, about um, Ironman specific training. The purpose of these videos weren't to gain any personal recognition, build a following or anything like that. It was just sticking out my journey and seeing if anyone actually liked it. Um, and if they wanted to, they could follow it. If they didn't, they didn't. It's not a business venture for me. I have my, my business is you know, very separate to this. So it's been really interesting to see, especially in the last few days, people having that interest, people coming together, people being inspired. And I think that was what I set out to achieve. You know, people that I don't even know, neighbours saying, oh, not long now. You know, that, that means that people are talking. You know, if people are talking and they're aware of it, it means that there's, there, there will be an element of inspiration there, an element of where well, he can do it, I can. And not everyone's going to have that approach towards it, towards it, or that connection. But I don't need everyone to, to have that connection. I don't need everyone to feel that way. I just need one, and then it makes it all worthwhile. And I think it's important to realise that the actions that we take on a daily basis will and do inspire people to go and do these things. You know, if we think about it logically, we think about it at a universal level, the actions and the behaviours that you displace now to the outside world will impact others. And it's what you say to others will determine how they go out and do whether they have that self-belief, that self-confidence to go and change an aspect of their life, whether they remain in the present, dormant, without moving, without any adjustments. If you're a business owner and you're inspiring your, your team in the right way, it's my belief that each and every one of them should want to become the next you the next business, your competitor. That's how staff should think in my world. They should want to leave and set their own business up. Now, a lot won't through job security. Some won't through laziness. Some will give it a go and not succeed 
and if you've left the door open for them, which I always recommend people do, because if they've got the balls to go and do it once and they don't succeed, the likelihood is they'll come back and actually they may value their job a little bit better. You're inspiring your team to do that then you're creating the perfect environment. Because ultimately, people generally have the perception that no one is good as, as good as them at what they do. The truth of the matter is, you may have one specific skill set which you're very attuned to, but the rest of it you're kind of mediocre at. I think if you can build a team that value their individual specific strengths, then you've got perfect working environment but also that works across all sectors I've been following three triathletes quite closely two age groupers one pro two female one male and I look at the coaches they use and it seems that there has been a kind of hierarchy involved where there's been a lot of crossover in career paths it seems that there's, a, there's like a pocket of, I'd say, 10 core pro triathlete coaches, probably 10, and they seem to coach, and I'd probably say five of those seem to coach the top 2%, top 1% of pros. at that elite level have combined or worked together. Despite having clients, friends, whatever you want to call them, clients, that are competing against each other, I bet that they talk a lot. Just, just a guess. I'm not talking about every day. I bet they, they speak on a regular basis. So, 14 days to go. I've got a ride tomorrow, then a run and a swim on Sunday, and then it's pretty much a... slows down quite a bit. Uh, today I have an hour nice and easy tempo run, nothing super, super exciting or cutting edge in sports performance, just a run, but just a run is going to be good because my legs are still aching from shifting all that, well, four tons of sand and cement from the other day. And aching slightly. So I'm going for a run, loosen things up a bit. I'm heading up towards where I went last week, uh, north of Arundel. It's a really nice day, so I'm going to go and catch some rays. Also just settle into a nice comfortable pace. Heart rate zone two to three. So that's it for now. I will catch up with you in a couple of hours.
So that's us done for today. Uh, as you can tell from the footage, absolutely stunning. Really nice, beautiful clear skies. Some really good hill climbs in there. But that was only an hour run. Um, there were some really good intense moments on each of the climbs. I think they were probably two good quality inclines. I always used to shy away from hilly routes, but I always find that with the extra energy needed with the climbs, the extra little bit of commitment required would almost indefinitely produce some of the best energetic views. It's that cliche of climb the highest mountain and see the best. But it really is true in the case of where I live on the south coast, you know, you've got to put in the extra effort on the runs. But once you get to the top of the hill, It's worth it, you know. That little bit of struggle, that small adjustment in heart rate zone actually brings about a calmer and more peaceful state. So for me it's worth it. There is an element of stress involved or you are stressing you're increasing that stress levels by pushing your heart rate zone a little bit further. Science tells us that you increase stress, you become more stressed. And I agree with this. Can't disagree with factual science. But I also think that if you can put yourself after that increase in stress into an environment that offers an element of peace and clarity and it does its justice for its value in the extra heart rate and the extra energy used. So that's it for today. I am off now to the gym and have a shower and a sauna I have a couple of clients later on today, so this is the last video. And I will see you first thing in the morning. For now, peace out, be safe, and I will see you in the morning.